Also, the Ed A. Maniac show is going to be on Hulu, too, so that's going to be cool. Yay. Oh, more, my favorite. And they're going to have Pinky in the Brain, too, so, yeah. About fucking time. Uh, you know, I wasn't a big fan of Animac Animaniacs as a kid, but when I watched it as an adult, I was like, oh my god, this movie, this show is hilarious. Oh no, like, Animaniacs is one of the most brilliant shows that people underestimate. Yeah, like... Animaniacs the... is one of those shows that you don't understand until you're older. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. No, even when I was a kid, I loved watching it so fucking much. I mean, I was... yeah, like, a, a, as a kid, it's basically just, you know, like, surface level, it's really funny. And then as an adult, it's like, wow. It's a lot more hilarious <laughs> than it has every yeah. fucking right they... to be. They, they got away with Wait, a lot you mean of these shit. Fingerprints? Yeah, they did. <laughs> We need a dust for prints. No, 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 no. Fingerprints. Uh, no. Oh, whoops. <laughs> People had just pointed out to me, God, I've been feeling very stupid today. Okay. There. Oopsies. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time I had pre-show on there. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's not often this happens. Retro Gamer Kevin, I finished Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Yeah. And Knuckles and Knuckles. Yep. And Knuckles and Knuckles. And I finished it very happily, despite how fucking stressful it has been. Because apparently, okay, so the first uh, playthrough last week, I failed to complete the final boss, or the final stage. And I had to end it on a cliffhanger. I'm like, fuck, dude. But then, like, over the... Over the course of next week, I had to replay the whole game because for whatever reason, the data was not saved. So I had to play the whole game again. And mind you, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, or I just call it Sonic 3 at this point, it... <laughs> Apparently, there's like 13 stages total. There's a shit ton of levels. Yep. And each of them are really long. This is also added on. To the fact that if you want the true ending, you have to collect all the Chaos Emeralds and the Super Emeralds. And yep. people, ever since I started playing the Sonic games, people were nagging on me saying, Get the Chaos Emeralds, you get a better ending. Okay, fine. I'll do it. So I did. Did you get him? Yes, I did. Did you feel good? I mean, yeah, I got a good ending. But I'm still annoyed that people were nagging on my ass. Did you feel accomplished after getting them all? Do you feel accomplished? I really need to fucking reorganize my chests. <laughs> oh yeah, there's more gunpowder in there. I can make more bullets. Nice. Yeah, this Minecraft mod has guns. Sonic Naturally, that's what I started building. I, I've been hearing so much about Sonic EXE. I don't even know if it's worth playing, because I've seen so many people react to it so many goddamn times. Sonic.ex... Oh, you mean the fucking creepypasta game? Yeah. AKA hashtag Undertale Backseat Gaming Cell. Yeah, Honestly, much. Sonic Sonic.exe, even as, like, a creepypasta game, it's, it's really not that good. Like... And I get it, and it's like, oh, yeah, it's cool to kind of, like, live through the experience, quote-unquote. E.G., really I know not. what it is. It's stupid. It's really not that good. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a poorly done, like, EX, like EXE program that tries to scare you. And they, they like, they throw in the freaking Kefka laugh for Final Fantasy VI whenever Sonic is present. You know, the... Yeah, <laughs> uh... yeah I know. I By the way, Rosaria, um, have a good night. <laughs> Why are you waving goodbye to Riley? I don't know. Who's Rosaria? Uh, in the stream chat. Uh, let's see. Sorry, my 
maybe they might be using a different name and I do know them. I, I don't know. <laughs> it's Rosaria25. Yeah, I don't, I don't recognize the name, but it might be somebody I know who uses a different username on Twitch or something. Maybe. It's on the Twitch stream chat, dude. I know. I'm looking at the Twitch stream. I'm looking at the name. I'm saying that she's probably, if I do know her, okay. that's probably a different username on Twitch. Then, then... Are you guys going to be kicking at each other all that long? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> who was on first base? Who was on second base? <laughs> Who's on stage? Who? No, who's what's on the stage? Na- the band what's planets? the name of the man on second base? No, what's the name? <laughs> no, I love the who joke. To who? The band yeah. playing on stage. Who? The band performing on stage. Who is on stage? That's what I'm asking you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so classic. The right, band on stage. Got a bit yes. Busy. No, yes, it's not performing on stage. <laughs> All right, everybody, we have a bit of a situation. Someone in here is possessed by an owl. Who? Well, that's the thing we... Oh, I love that one. I love that TikTok. <laughs> I like the hammerhead shark puppet because of the yeah. way his head moves when he speaks. Oh, God, you're <laughs> actually playing... You're sharing the goddamn clip. Actually, yeah. no, I remember when I was reviewing um, uh, Tanks for the Memories, MLP, and there was actually a scene that I wanted to redo because it was actually one of those who's um, first on base joke. I say, but there are uh, cloudy slides everywhere. And they're I named know, after the ponies, and that was just clever right there. So I redid the whole thing with the whole, who's on stage? Who? The band playing on stage. Who? The band performing on stage. Who is on stage? That's what I'm asking you. Oh, <laughs> uh, the classic. <laughs> I swear, Animaniacs just, it was way ahead of its time. It, it was. It was way too ahead of its time. It had a good last... Such good writing. Yeah, no, it had a good last in, like, five years when it was aired on um, Kids WB. Oh. My YouTube username is Mysterio Rosaria. Okay. Hmm. I, I think a lot of kids would, like, yeah, okay, so G. Nichol says, I didn't get it as a kid, but years later I got it. Yeah, that's mainly because what they're referencing are based on bands from, like, the early 70s and late 60s. And so if you're a kid, you're not going to know who they are. I grew up on a lot of classic rock. Oh, I did, too. I just didn't know the names of them until I was in my teen years. Like, this band's called The Who. This band's called The Beatles. This is Fleetwood Mac. This is Boston. This is Queen. And I was just on a roll looking up so many different band names and listening to the music. I was like... Fuck modern music. I want to go to this era. <laughs> uh, not really. I wouldn't. I I like that I live in the modern era. Not gonna lie. Well, I was I was joking, but like I, I know, like it was hard for me to adapt to modern rock because to me, like I always pictured modern rock as like screaming your ass off into the microphone. And I never, like, I could never understand the appeal of that until many years later. And now I just listen to Slipknot and System of a Down without a problem. Other days I'll listen to Avenged Sevenfold or I'll listen to, um, I gotta dig for one of them. <laughs> oh yeah, there was the, that, that song from, um, uh, South Park when, um, Cartman puts together a metal band. Oh, metal band or the, or the Christian rock band? No, the, the metal band. Um, oh yeah, from the recent. So yeah, um, the song that they used—it's called a uh, useless sacrifice. I forgot what the band's name was. I keep forgetting. Like, I'll, okay, let me look it up. I'm not gonna play it, obviously, because that would be a serious copyright issue. Death decline—that's the name of the band. Yeah, they they sampled oh, that. Tr- yeah, they sampled no. that song. <laughs> oh god. I was, I'm not gonna show the Twitch chat, but I'll show you guys. Oh god! I love classic rock and eighties music. Oh, Blue Griffin! I'm a complete idiotic sucker for hair metal. He is. Yeah. And yes, I even enjoy Cherry Pie, despite how disgusting that song is. <coughs> what the hell? What? What is this? I am not gonna click <laughs> that, and I'm not gonna give the details on what the All fuck right. you shared us. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna 
copy. <laughs> no, well, don't, see. don't, don't you fucking dare! I don't you fucking dare, Riley! Ah, it was the I first see. thing I saw. The struts ah. are the next queen. Well, I'm then. Heavily cursed. Oh, okay then. <laughs> 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 okay, I'm gonna share that cancer. <laughs> no, don't share it in the Twitch chat. Don't. Oh, I was I wasn't gonna share it in the Twitch chat. <laughs> okay. So where are you gonna share it? A bunch of other chats in their in their dirty jokes section. Okay, that's fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Imagine Golden E.G. Bean Music teaches saying, All right, class, today we'll be learning about the history of bands. And they'll just grab a giant speaker and play, like, either Metallica, Sabaton, or Slipknot and, like, play it on full blast. No, I would do it in the same fashion as, uh, what is that show called? The Something Brothers? Riley, uh, you used to put it on a lot. It was from Adult Brothers. Swim. Remember. Is it Venture Brothers? Oh, Venture, Venture Brothers. Brothers. Yeah. yeah. There was a there was actually there was an episode where the professor put out like a huge basket rack full of progressive rock uh, records. And yeah, I remember that. And he yeah. was like having Dean listen to him in order to get like ideas for like experiments and shit. That's how I would teach him. Progressive rock. But I would show them like, okay, let's see. Here's some psychedelic rock here. We got some um we got some what, strawberry alarm clock? Then, like, I go to, like, the 70s era, like, ooh, here's a special homework for you. The Wall. And then afterwards, you got a movie to watch. Just uh, take my advice. Don't watch the Nostalgia Critic review. Bam. Burn. Yeah. That's how I fucking teach them. It's like, put on your headphones, sit back and relax, and enjoy. Play. And just call it a day. <laughs> 80s hair metal, then why don't you get the 80s rock rocker hair? Um, it takes a really long time to grow your hair, dude. They can get a wig. Eh, I don't know. Having long, like, natural hair, I think is a little bit more, I don't know, natural. Genres like huh. punk, post-punk, Britpop, grunge, and hair metal are making returns. Uh, I would say that with a pinch of salt, because, like, there have been times when people are saying that rock is becoming less relevant, and it's, like, almost, like, going extinct, and I'm like, if it was going extinct, people wouldn't be talking about it. It's, it's not too much on the pop charts, and that's why they probably think that. Well, the other thing is, is that in the rock culture, and I'm saying this with a pinch of salt, a lot of people can't stand the mainstream, and they're kind of against it for, more, like, a platitude of reasons, because they think of it as, like, selling out and such. Like, the hair metal stuff, like, I had a guilty pleasure with it. But a lot of people, even in the 80s, hated that genre because it was such a big, like... To quote Deet Snyder from Twisted Sister, he said the music was so processed and so refined that it became pablum. <laughs> he wants to see processed. <laughs> Oh. Wait till he hears about auto tune. Oh yeah. Oh, I'll bet he may have lost his goddamn mind over Imagine Dragons. Oh man, the, I, one band I can definitely say sold out was fucking Maroon Five. They sold oh, out. Oh god, hard. I never liked Maroon Five. And me maybe, either. But maybe maybe it's just me being a child saying this, but that song of theirs, "He Said Goodbye Too Many Times," was played on the radio every five minutes. It drove me crazy. Yeah, it wasn't even that good of a song, and they're just playing it over and over. I'm like, what the fuck is this? And then that's how I discovered Maroon 5, and every time I heard any song, I really don't like the lead vocalist, you know, voice. Oh, uh, yeah, um, uh, was it Ryan Gosling? No, I'm thinking of something else. Let me, let me I mean, look. I don't want to... I don't want to sound like that one person who just, like, would nag on different voices and such. Like, one would sound too nasal and shit. Because I also love listening Adam to... Adam Levine. Sorry. Hello? I completely lost track. Um, no, uh, as far as voices go, because I also like Rush, and I don't mind Getty Lee's voice. Because his is like a little squeaky pitch sometimes. Adam Levine, yeah. No, uh, Getty Lee from Rush. Oh, okay. Fly by nights away from here. Change my life again. 
I need to listen to the new songs from the from Gorillas. I need to listen. To this. Let's see, bands from fucking Norway play here. Y'all really love rock. Well, no shit, Magical Star. <laughs> Sorry. Of course, Rush is great, and I am. May the drummer rest in peace. Uh, What's his name? Neil Part. I would have to look his name up. But yeah, the drummer for Rush. Um, God, he was so amazing when he was... Uh, there was a footage from like one of those uh, movie sharing channels, like HBO. And it was, um, it was them performing songs for moving pictures. And there was a scene where the drummer was just going all out for like five minutes. I'm like, this is amusing. <laughs> Neil Part, yeah. Hmm. See, also ACDC or Led Zeppelin. Oh, yeah, no, dude. I fucking love Led Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. ACDC, there's like maybe one or two albums that I like listening to. There's like Highway to Hell and Back in Black. But when you're trying to like expand with other songs, there's like only a handful. And I don't even know what happened after that. Uh, let's see. Rush is the few, uh, the fewest bands that never had fights with each other nor broken up. Oh boy, I remember hearing stories about Oasis. One of which even included a fucking track for fit. I think it's fifteen minutes of just the of the members arguing at each other. That was literally a fucking thing, and I'm just sitting there like that blows my mind, and it became a hit, and I'm just like, what the fuck. Why would somebody enjoy listening to that? And it, like, I even hear that the band broke up because the just how it ends is that somebody got hit with a guitar. Jesus, I, talk about serious toxicity. I mean, to be fair, uh, if somebody beat me over the head with a guitar, I probably wouldn't be want to be friends with them either. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, no. Throwing a Honestly guitar, same. ouch. Oh, wait, I stand corrected. Adam threw a chair at Noel. Ooh. Still, ow! Fuck, dude! <laughs> yeah, no, chairs fucking hurt, especially the... The bottom end. I mean, it depends on what kind of chair, but still, fucking hurts. Don't do that. Mmm. The shit people do. Mmm. The thing that's so ironic about that, and I'm saying this with a pinch of salt, is that when the Britpop like, era was around, it was the same time when the grunge era was around. And the Brits, or the Britpop groups, hated the grunge era because of how depressing it was, so they wanted to make happier songs. And yet what's so ironic is that the members are just at each other's throats. So I'm just like, what the hell? Sometimes the music business is just fucking weird. Hmm. I'm probably boring you guys with all the music shit. Nah, it's fine. It's like, oh, Green Day. Whoa, what about Green Day? Gold, let's see, The Ver, Bittersweet Symphony. Grunge Rock is pretty much blues with attitude. I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I did hear at some points that grunge was like a bit of a trend and then it died off in the mid-90s. And yes, I enjoy Green Day. Do you have the time to listen to me whine about nothing and everything all at once? Bands were having steam with each other is because of the genre success. They hated the term Britpop because it sounded like they're more pop bands and not rock bands. You know what? I'll give them that. Because, like, it, it almost feels insulting now whenever they say, oh, this is more pop. And, yeah, that, that's very dismissive of what, like, rock is. Rock is supposed to be its own genre, whereas pop music is just popular music played on the radio. And it's mostly dance music, so it kind of blurs away from what the yeah. genre is. Sky Gaze. Hmm. The only thing I can say about the band itself, uh, Oasis, is that everybody knows that stupid song Wonderwall. 
Like every time I pull out a guitar, like somebody pulls out a guitar and somebody's like, "Ooh, play uh play Wonderwall by uh, Oasis." Anyways, here's Wonderwall. <laughs> no, there's one other song that I actually first discovered before the whole Wonderwall thing, and that was um Champagne Supernova. Very beautiful song. Let's see, have any of you guys ever heard of Shine Down? It is also one of my fa- Yes, I do. Uh, I they have. Did, yeah, the Bully song. Um God, Diamond what? Eyes. Diamond Eyes? Yeah, Shine Down. I'll have to look that one up. Uh, they did... Um... It sounds pretty neat. Yeah, they, they have that, that post-grunge sound with the touch of uh, Southern Rock. I mean, it's a group that took a huge influence from Leonard Skinner, so... Hmm. Let's see. How about Cheap Trick or Depth Leopard? Every time I think of Cheap Trick, I think of that song from the Top Gun soundtrack. Uh, Mighty Wings. Take me on your mighty wings. Take me on your mighty wings tonight. Uh, Def Leppard. Um, I actually like Def Leppard. A lot of their songs. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Sound of Madness. 45. That was the other song from Shine Down. God, that was a brutal song. And I'm swimming down the ashes of a 45. Swim. Uh, swimming through the ashes of another life. Shit. Wow, I'm an idiot. Um, never heard of Wonderwall, but I've heard Windrill, which is a parody of it. I don't know. Shine Down is nice. I first heard of them. Uh, One Piece, AMV, and Diamond Eyes. Oh, that's right. The first song I heard from Shine Down, and it left an impact. It was a uh, Fly from Inside. I don't think that many people know of the song. I could be wrong. <clears throat> hmm. Speaking of music, has anyone heard of the song and music video What's Up With You by Eddie Murphy? Oh yeah, that's right. Eddie Murphy had a music career in the 80s. Mm-hmm. Eh. Am I the only one who loved the band Spice Girls? No, there's actually a couple of other friends I have who like Spice Girls. Like, I can be... I have a guilty pleasure with the Backstreet Boys and a little bit of NSYNC. Probably because of the nostalgia factor it has. Because I remember hearing Bye Bye, like, all over the radio airwaves. Bye 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 Bye. bye. Hmm. And that's also a... What is it? Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Also, Three Days Grace or Rise Against? Uh, Three Days Grace all the way. Back when they had the freaking 1X album. Oh, yeah. one. Honestly, that was the only album I listened to. Pain without love. Pain. I can't get enough. Pain. I like it rough because I'd rather feel pain than nothing at all. God, I grew up listening to Oh God, Linkin Park. Yes, I pretty much have an appreciation for nearly every one of their albums, and by no surprise, I was devastated when I heard about Chester. May the man rest. <clears throat> Are you familiar with MCR's Black Parade? Who doesn't, dude? Everybody knows the Black Parade album. Let's see, I saw Three Days Grace last August when they opened up for Breaking Benjamin. Also, are you guys a fan of BB as well? I like a handful of Breaking Benjamin songs. I mean, I first discovered their band uh, when, um, uh, what is it, uh, Blow Me Away from the Halo 2 soundtrack. The Immortals, Fallout Boys. Let's see, I want Tim Burton to make a stop motion animated film of that. Numb, best song ever. Did one of the Backstreet Boys play Chip Skylark and sang My Shiny Teeth in Me? Oh, I'm, I actually yeah. think that's true. Yeah, I think I think that's actually true, yeah. Okay, yeah. Shiny Teeth in Me. Do, 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 do. I know that uh, Lance Bass, also of NSYNC, did, uh, did like 
an entire boy band in Gravity Falls that were all clones of each other. Oh, I think I've seen that, and they were like set free. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, three days grace. I am machine is good. Also disturbed. At this point, everybody knows disturbed because of the iconic grunt sound. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> see, I like Fallout Boy songs for most songs. Okay. Um. I like the earlier works of Fall Out Boy. Like, um, what was it? They had a uh, Saturday. They had um, Sugar We're Going Down. Savage Garden. The yeah, that song too. Like you, but Angels Fall and I Will Now Bow are the songs I know from Breaking Benjamin. Oh, dude, you, you're going to have... Look up Blow Me Away. Like, that's the song that definitely put their name on the charts. And it was all for freaking Halo 2. There have been many occasions where when I'm in the server... Um, I just start up a freaking like jukebox party and just put like a shit ton of songs and everybody else throws it in. Like some put in Queen, some put in like progressive uh, rock band Sounds names. Like that... Simple plan, like cultured people. Fuck you. I don't like simple plans. Okay, good for you. What? Okay, what objectively is wrong with them? They sound like they're whining most of the time. And other bands that Lincoln Park's lyrics are whining. So is Coldplay. Not really. Most of Fall Out Boy's songs are being a petty breakup. I think the whining is like a very petty description. Well, it's not done very well. He said game very well. They sang a What's New Scooby Doo theme song. They are immortal. And okay, what else have they done aside from the Scooby Doo song? <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> what's new, <laughs> the What's New Scooby Doo like intro was, like, was pretty don't fire. Wanna think about mm. you. Which was on the Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed. All right, I'm back. Um, <laughs> Anything else aside from Scooby fucking do? There's other good simple plan songs. It's just that the, it's a lot of their B-side stuff because they're mostly known for the emo shit. Oh, uh, Summer Paradise with Taka. I'm just saying, if you okay listen to more of their discography, you may find more reputable things. It's kind of like how people don't think Smash Mouth is a good band, but they actually really are. Somebody once told me. I had the sharpest tool in the shed. Kiss was she in was a Scooby Doo movie. Dumb. Remember? Yes, I know about that. It's a great movie. Who wasn't in a Scooby Doo movie? It's so much fun. Uh, there's you know, it's lot. funny because that that what question actually cannot be answered with John Cena. No, they were asking was who wasn't in a Scooby Doo movie. movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was. Simple Plan was uh, an episode of What's New Scooby Doo. Okay. Oh yeah, they also did the theme song. <laughs> Chrissy just mentioned that like two seconds ago. Yeah, no, I I I fucking concurred with with her and I. I said, what's new Scooby-Doo intro is pretty fire. Yeah. Steel Ranger, you sound like Obi-Wan saying that. Simple plan. Now that is a band I haven't listened to in forever. Hmm. I think you're just being pretentious. It's who likes Panic at the Disco. I think a lot of people <laughs> like Panic. I, I love Panic Brendan Urie. I love, I love Brendan Urie. He... he the only me, thing you people ever heard of. Hey, look, closing the goddamn it door, it no. I swear, though, if Always I hear high, high hopes, hopes one more time, <laughs> I am going to murder someone. <laughs> I am so fucking sick of high, high hopes. I am so goddamn sick of that you know, song. You, can, you know, you can always go back to. Welcome to the end of eras. <laughs> Done my time and served my sentence. Serve me up and watch me die. Feels good, tastes good, it must be mine. Dynasty decapitated. 
Oh, that Emperor's Mercy. New Clothes Mercy album was tonight. so good. That and Victorious are so good. Wait, no, is that... <laughs> Wait, maybe I got them backwards. <laughs> Victorious Welcome and Emperor's New Clothes are, like, such good songs. See, name a Daft Punk song that is not One More Time, Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger, or Get Lucky. God, Get Lucky was such an overplayed song. Oh, I, I like that album, then. Yeah, the entire really Random good. Access memory is so good. No, that's uh, Technologic. No, Get Lucky is... Uh, We're up all night to have fun. I know what I'm saying. I'm listing other songs that they did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Random Access Memories was a good album. Holy shit. <laughs> I can't wait for their next album. Oh. Uh, th 2013 was a good year in music. I I'm like 2012 and 2013 were good music years. And it looks like we're going back to the hair metal days with Bon Jovi. Oh, Bon Jovi. Oh, we're happy there. I love how me and Golda went for the same thing at the same time. Well, don't forget, I'm a cowboy. I'm wanted, wanted, dead or dead alive. Or alive. Dead or alive. <laughs> See, there's like multitude of reasons why I can be a sucker for freaking hair metal. Like, okay, aside from Bon Jovi, there was also Europe. Final Countdown, anybody? It's yeah. the final countdown. And yet that was that was like play some of like bottom fifty worst songs. I'm like What are you on about? That's fucking iconic. Exactly. Shot through the heart and you're too late. You give love a bad nap. Did you type in band-aid? Toad, what the hell? Wow, that's yeah. fucking heresy, and you should be tried for fucking treason. No, I said, Brother, and you're the too late. The heavy flamer. It shot through the heart, and you're too late. That's what I said. No, you said, and you're too late. Yeah, no, it's, it's to blame, not you too late. You fucked up the yeah, rhyme, you music aficionado. You Actually, now I think about it, that makes a lot it. more sense. What did, bon, yeah. what did Bon Jovi did? Oh, what Bon Jovi did was... One of his memorable songs, I can't remember. We were just talking about it, Joe. <laughs> we Will Rock You. Oh, there was a recent cover of We Will Rock You, and I was surprised with what they did. Hang was on. That, uh, heavy Metal one or something? Uh, hang on. I'll take any excuse to listen to a cover of We Will Rock You because I just really enjoy that song. Okay, so the band is called In This Moment, and this features Maria Blink, Lizzie Hale, and Taylor Momsman. Lizzie Hale, I remember a lot, but I was surprised with what they did with this one. It had a lot of atmosphere put to it. Oh, did you link it in the Twitch chat? I'm not on Twitch anymore. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, I, I didn't link it anywhere. Oh, okay. You, you should totally do that. Okay. <laughs> Well, I'll go ahead and just you link it. You can't just say, hey, I really like this music, and then not link the music. Well, the, the other thing that's uh, tricky is is if I play it while I'm streaming. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, I know, but if you drop a link, like, what are they going to do? Oh, he posted a link to unsolicited music. Better ban this motherfucker. He's <laughs> live. Like the... <laughs> <laughs> He's that too dangerous to be kept alive. <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne or Black Sabbath? Oh, God, that's hard. Like, rough. Like, okay, to be fair with Black Sabbath, I've only listened to a handful of their songs, and I was from the earlier part when they first started, like Iron Man and Paranoid. Or uh, War Pigs. But I can't War really Pig think... Really like, cool. Yeah, I don't know much about their later music during the 70s while Ozzy was still in the band, but when it came to Ozzy's um, solo career... I, I just felt myself a lot more invested because something about his solo music was, I don't know, maybe it was just me. Because obviously there's Crazy Train, but there's also Miracle Man. There's also uh, Man uh, Mama, I'm Coming Home. And also I heard the, a handful of the um, recent uh, songs from the recent album, Ordinary Man. Hmm. It's still surreal that they had freaking Elton John in that. 
Let's see. Hmm. Did Ozzy Osbourne bit a bat and what's up? No, there was a performance where Ozzy grabbed the bat and he bit off the head and he thought it was a fake bat to just add onto the performance and the whole time it was a real bat. Hmm. <laughs> like, whoops. <laughs> Yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> and there was a similar thing where he was with Sharon, and he just grabbed a pigeon and bit off the head, and other people around him were throwing up. Like, what the fuck? <clears throat> also, yes, I know Ozzy is dealing with Parkinson's disease, but hey, he's he's fighting the fight, man. Wait, Ozzy Osbourne has Parkinson's? Yeah, apparently he was fighting Parkinson's disease for about ten years, and he finally let the word out uh, not so long ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. This Dr. Pepper is flat, but I'm still drinking it. <laughs> okay. You need a shower. You're sweaty. Yeah. I'm sharing that with your audience to embarrass you. <laughs> but he might be retiring soon for his health. You know what? I think that is for the better. There have been times when I think, like, ordinary man sounds like the nice, like, and, like, goodbye song before he retires but then i keep hearing rumors that he's gonna do another album like uh, are you capable dude you are weird no i just have a working nos nose and i've been around a bunch of nice sweet things because i've been cooking and baking for these roommates and only one is appreciative can you guess which one it's the one that doesn't have a penis Penis. I, I could have made a joke there, but I'm not going to. Venus. See, Rush retired when Neil Part's health was getting worse. Um, that was until he passed away. I, I've been hearing that Rush kind of retired quietly, which I think is for the better. Let's see. It looks like they weren't in a rush to retire. Sh shut no. up. <laughs> no. God. God. You you hey. hear that from the headphones? That's everybody grunting. Well, I don't talk to anybody, <laughs> so why do I care what, in, what I inflict on them? Life is just a series of meaningless annoyances with partial achievements until we drop dead. I mean... So deep, bro. Yeah. Not wrong. <clears throat> Jesus, you people just do not... You guys get so so angry so easily. Did you I am not milk angry. Milk before your I ain't time? angry. I am not fucking angry. It's called okay. Playing along. <laughs> I, I am. See, playing Jesus. along this would have been making a pun back. It's called combatness. Instead of just yelling bad, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I've probably got a text message. You should pick dance party shade blue for your Twitch name. What? I thought that was well timed. Thank you. Who? What? What? No, no, I, I, I fucking you tuned out for a second. And I... my house. Yeah, my my I brain just went dial up. Boy, what? I could do what I want. I could say what I want. I, I tuned out red. for a moment and I tuned back into uh, fucking Brony Dance you Party hippie? Blue for your Twitch name. I was like, wait What's a minute, what the fuck? Brony Dance Party Blue, what? <laughs> Bro, Brony Dance Party's OC was that color blue when you look With at yellow hooves and yellow mane, and the body was like very saturated blue. It was really hard on the eyes. Oh, did he have frosted tips too? Lego animation. Oh, that explains it! Like, his Lego OC turned into a pony creator pony. Like, that's the origin of that OC. Yeah, Brody Dance Party used to make Lego animations. Oh, boy. Oh. Hey. The more you know. Hey, no hate towards Lego animators. Any kind of stop motion takes work. Yeah. Stop motion, yeah. I can I'm confirm. Hater. I used to do stop motion, like, like in elementary school as a hobby. No rights it's... It's it takes a fucking minute. Uh, E.G. Uh, she was talking about the text that uh, is on your um... screen. Yeah, because it's like saturated blue. Everybody gets random Twitch colors on Twitch streams, and yours just yeah. so happen to be the kind of the, the kind of color that hurts, man. We're not taking the piss out of you. <laughs> <laughs> We're taking the piss out of your tw your Twitch color text name thing. Yeah, the more you know. 
Although they were known from the Sonic series, but Crush 40. No, dude, I love Crush 40. Crush 40, yeah, honestly, Sonic put Crush 40 on the map. Let's not kid ourselves. Rolling around at the speed of sound. Let's not pretend otherwise. SA2 is what put them on the map. Whoa. I'd say the first song from Sonic Adventure 1 was pretty good, too. Which one? Open Your Heart? Yeah, Open Your Heart. Uh, honestly, yeah, okay. I I uh, agree with that. Open Your Heart was pretty good. Jesus Christ. What the hell is this? And the Sonic Unleashed song where they got the lead singer from Bowling for Soup to sing it was pretty good, too. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> Bowling's for Soup. That's a name I haven't heard in a while. Hey. Yeah, I I know of Yellow Card. I didn't listen to him all that much. Dude. I heard yeah. The thing I know about Yellow Card is that they're trying to sue a dead rapper. Oh, what? hey, yeah, is that yeah, that's this illegal. fucking thing happening where Yellow Card's trying to sue Juice World, who's an artist who tragically passed last year, for stealing an idea in a song like I don't know, like a chord progression or something. Just move on. How do you steal an idea from a yeah, song? About... Look, all music is derivative of itself. Everything follows yeah. the same fucking four chord progression. Everything is fucking derivative. I hate the whole argument of, you stole my song. Unless you're, like, completely lifting the song and lyrics and everything. Everything is derivative of something else. Nothing is truly original. Yeah. Nothing is sacred, nothing is special. I mean, special. a We're lot of songs, I, I think there's a Go joke for it. I call it the Kennedy uh, uh, formula that a lot of modern uh, like musicians use. Yeah. Do you have the time I mean, to listen to me one? I mean, you've got Kennedy, you've got the pop song chords that you hear from Don't Stop Believing, and you got the natural blues progression. Yeah. You get there. There's very simple arpeggios and progressions that are in everything. And to say, like, oh, this song has a similar bass line. It's a ripoff. It's like, first of all, you can't expect every, a musician to listen to every song in existence. Like, you can't expect every screenwriter to see every movie in existence. Like, you know, if someone wants to do a show with magical adventures and stuff, they can't say, oh, this is a Steven Universe ripoff because they can summon, we summon weapons. So can Sailor Moon. Everything is not original. It's the point of if you write it well. I, I, I'm i sorry. You it's know like, what? I I would love to, to have used that argument for people who bitch about the Lion King ripping off Kimba. Yeah. I, I'm just saying it's, it's stupid. Also, I'm glad that your chat is... Um, Definitely contributing to the topic by just shouting more band names. Thank you. I feel so listened to. Keyframe, well, I, mean, I was angry, angry right now. Sarcasm is just my face. What was, what was that, Solar? Mm. Is she angry right now? I think she's angry. <laughs> oh, she would have a right to be upset. <laughs> what? I know. I said you would kind of have a right to be upset. Because after everything you were talking about, people were like, Ooh, what about this band and what about that band? I'm not upset. Look, my natural tone of voice is sarcasm. I think anyone Twitch who's hat. met me in person knows that I'm I'm very deep down. I'm genuine and sweet. I just have the tone of an asshole. I know. I think everybody here They're knows. They're either agreeing with me or vehemently saying no in, in your call. <laughs> huh? Is he ripping off Simba? Oh, Kimba, Chim Kimba the White Lion. Yeah, apparently there was a like ever since the Lion King came out, there was a controversy mm -hmm. saying that it ripped off Kimba, and that they used a lot of like similarities. Like the villain Scar, you also have Claw from the Kimba. You have a flying bird like Zazu. You have a warthog. And a a flying bird. Oh, that's a real fucking. That, that's a that's some real. Shut fucking up, Solar. Person. Apparently, we're all penguins, and that's such an outlandish thing to hear. Fine, but <laughs> there was also a CND thing that happened in the late nineties when the company made a legit movie of Kimba that Disney sent a CND to. But what they neglect to mention is that like a day afterwards, they completely took the case down, like they removed it. But okay, look, here's the thing about the Kimba shit, and this is the whole thing with anime versus Western animation and ripping stuff off. It just goes into my basic argument. 
a lot of anime and Eastern animation took influence from classic Western animation, and then over the turn of the next cent, you know, when we were getting close to the new, exactly when the '80s and the new millennium started to come, and we started getting more things imported into the U.S. because the '80s and '90s were more industry importing instead of hello, <laughs> instead of like once we reached the 2000s when we got more consumer imports, like with VHSs, anime cons, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. People are just inspired by other things. And Tezuka was inspired by Bambi to make Kimba. Exactly. Yeah. Astro Boy was inspired by Mickey Mouse. There's things and all where fucking anime opens are influenced by the by the dub. Except that creation is a ping pong game. Miyazaki was inspired by Disney movies. D current Disney animes are inspired by Ghibli films. I think this mm -hmm. is something that should be encouraged and celebrated instead of segregated because then people are going to be less inclined to look at the original stuff that people are arguing is a ripoff of because people naturally have a fight or flight response. I know you for the longest time didn't want to watch Kimba because you were afraid that you would go into the oh Lion King is a ripoff camp. I think everyone should just if the, someone says oh this thing is like this thing just broaden your horizons and watch the other thing because no matter what they will have diametric opposites and differences because they're from different creative teams and uh, different cultures about watching kimba i've watched the first few episodes the mother died when both she and kimba were on some kind of a ship being shipped out somewhere and then something happened and caused the ship to blow up kimba escaped and was aided out of the ocean simba did not go through that my point being, I feel like people try to make the argument of what's a ripoff of what, because people just like to be negative Nancy's. Oh, you mean like the news? People are just trying to make the world exciting that to them, is a and the only way they to do that is... <laughs> but point being, point being, I don't know, I just find, I find the accentuation of the negative trend on the internet very, very exhausting. I, um... I understand critique. I am all for critique, and I don't think people should be blindly positive, but uh, the blindly negative attitude that people go for entertainment on the internet is very annoying. You notice that, and the thing is, that this audience you have here probably subconsciously enjoys negative content. They, en they enjoy when you get mad. If someone points out some of your, your, the favorite reviews of yours, they're probably the ones where you get really angry at something. There is a catharsis to watching people be angry. However, it kind of skews things that the only content that people find to be intelligent and worthwhile is the cynical kind, which is not true because now people have this preconception that positivity is uh, is synonymous with naivete and be and ignorance, which yeah. I don't think so. We just need to find a balance, and no one ever wants to find a balance with fucking things. Yeah. Sorry, uh, no. Charity, the thing about AVGN is that you were never supposed to take it seriously. I mean, the very no. idea when James Roll first made the video on Castlevania 2, how silly is it to harshly critique an NES game that was out more than 20 years ago? I mean, the video was out in 2004, but it gained a following. If They thought it was hilarious. Now, nowadays, yeah, he's more constructive of what he gives, but at the end of the day, it's his critique, and it's it's more reliable. It, it's more comedy driven. So see, the thing is with hmm. AVGN, he has charm. Well, yeah, James is also the balance. I think people should achieve because He's very level headed because people understand the the persona. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, yeah. the persona is vastly different than James himself, but. He also includes some constructiveness now because you've seen the growth from his first videos to his newest ones. Yeah. With people like, like, and I like some of these people, like YMS and IHE and Doug. You don't know where the character ends and the person begins. They sometimes blur. And also, I think they, they will f omit positive things to stick with this cynical persona. And I'm not saying, and you know, that's their hustle, that's their character, that's fine. I more feel feel that the fan bases should not take that as a mantra to go by with everything else they do. You shouldn't be so indoctrinated by the media that you watch that you start to apply it to everything. You should just apply it to the things that the media is applied to. 
I feel like people lose their sense of free will and go into a hive mind because you notice that people will start to have an automatic feeling about something, like an automatic feeling about a movie. Like, uh, I like the Super Mario Brothers movie. Uh huh. And a lot of people will automatically say it shit before even watching it. And I'm like, okay, did you watch the film? And they're like, no, but I've seen, like, Nostalgia Critic's review of it. Don't believe just off of a review. Oh, no, that's, but that's the thing <laughs> that's... that people do. They will go to a review and say, oh, okay, if this person thinks that, they... Uh, they... And without giving it a chance. Yeah, because I know a lot of people who will not go see movies because they hear that it's badly reviewed instead of saying... You heard it on the internet, it must be true. I understand not giving it ticket money and watching it when it's on the internet or on a subscription service or something. Mm-hmm. But, you know, two different things. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm overtaking your... your, your no, nah, it's fine. I will say that... It is with the perfectly su- okay. No, like, I remember when I saw the Super Mario Brothers movie, and yeah, it, like... It is a dumb movie. But it's, it's a... It's, 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 it's just a fun, a, dumb movie. It was, for, like... A bomb. Some people can find it as, like, a silly, fun, dumb movie. Um... Let's see, I don't believe it, especially if it's coming from Doug Walker. Oh no, Doug Walker's reputation is dipped so hard. That's really saying nothing new. After the change the channel shit, I just couldn't watch him anymore. I was like I was just like wondering what the fuck was he thinking when it came to the wall review. Uh he f- was uh. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, it's not a great movie, but it's not terrible. No, a lot of, uh, as, as far as video game adaptations go, a lot of people put Super Mario Brothers at, like, the number one spot. And I'm sitting there thinking, you know, there's other movies that I just find personally insulting. Like, I've already gone on this tirade before, so I'm not going to repeat myself. But the unfortunate reality is that, yeah, some people have this uh, this habit, this mindset of just immediately agreeing with somebody just out of a review without giving it a closer chance. Like, well, obviously the uh, Super Mario Brothers movie, but you guys remember the freaking Space Jam review that Doug had? Yeah. And I I said before, like, the movie is stupid fun. That's all it is. If you're getting all angry about it, it's like, well, I guess that's on you. I mean, I will agree with a couple of things. Like, with the Tom and Jerry movie, yeah, I I didn't think it would ever work to put dialogue in Tom and Jerry and have them talk. The idea was supposed to show that actions speak louder than words. I haven't Mm. seen the movie entirely, so I can't give it full judgment, but there are some things that do irritate me about the movie. That movie is not that good. There you go. I mean, that one is, um... The collaboration with the Willy Wonka movie was better than the Tom and Jerry movie. Uh, I, I, I don't know, man. There's certainly more entertainment value in the Willy You're Wonka. You're cutting in and out for me now. That's what I said. The Willy Wonka crossover is better than the Tom and Jerry movie. Okay. Oh, the Willy Wonka, Tom and Jerry. Jesus, I'm already you know, four hours in. Okay, I think I should call it a night because I'm like, I'm already four hours in. Yeah, I was about to say, the post yeah, show is it. just... <laughs> oh my god, is this just like speeches about music and entertainment and shit? It's all yeah, we've got a show that's going to be longer than the actual yes. gameplay at this rate. I didn't give up on it. I've been meaning to get back to it, but I just don't know what... Every, everyone's in fucking quarantine right now. I think you can do it. Yeah, no, like, who's available during the weekend or the time to actually do the podcast? They're all home! <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. I mean, I'm open for any time, as so long as I'm not asleep somehow. All right, well, uh, I'll see what I can work with. But yes, I actually did want to bring back the podcast. I didn't abandon it. Like the child on the lawn. Everybody in work. quarantine, bruh. Yeah. Anyways. I still think the quarantine streams would be a thing. It's the same. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. All right, well, um, thank you guys for stopping by, and, uh, yeah, yeah, and, uh, I'll catch you guys next Friday, as I have that night off, as I continue with Yoshi's Island, so, yeah.